Previously, I have argued that the three greatest movements in Western architecture, Greco-Roman, Gothic, and Modern, were derived from societal philosophies that governed their aesthetics, and then the architects of those eras sought beauty outside of themselves in accordance with that philosophy. That is why they produce such great buildings and why we study them as architecture students. The downside of such study is that we as students imagine that someday other students will be studying our buildings. Architecture history is not immune to our current society's fascination with celebrity, and this subtly forces architects to seek the new instead of the good, to look for their place in history, to design something because our society confuses novelty with creativity. This has given us a fourth force in architecture, ego-driven architecture. That is my impression when I walk through Santiago Calatrava's PATH station at the World Trade Transportation Hub in New York City. It is known as the Oculus. Like some lateral eye of Sauron, it occupies a spot in 9-11's Ground Zero. The space is phenomenal, broad, bright, pure white, and it makes you feel adventurous while you're commuting, like you're in the belly of a great fish, like Jonah, and it certainly has a transcendent church feeling. Calatrava's battles to get it built his way could be justified, and most people walking through the space will be very impressed, and maybe that's all that matters. Calatrava is less the master builder and more the magician architect. His buildings are illusions. They are not the kind of expressive structural genius buildings done by the likes of Pierre Luigi Nerve or Ero Serenin. Any honest magician will tell you they are merely the front for a lot of work that is going on behind the scenes. At first look, his buildings are structurally dynamic and exciting. And that is why the world and I took notice. But then you find out a lot of his buildings are eye tricks, and many don't function as they were designed. And soon you learn that Calatrava doesn't design the frame, he merely sketches an idea and gives it off to others to make it work. But in a universe where the fakery of Disney World is the most visited place on Earth, perhaps truth does not matter. And so maybe I'm alone in believing that beauty is derived from truth. Calatrava's original design was supposed to be like a child's intertwined fingers that would open up as if releasing a dove. It could not be built. And so as it got redesigned in order to fit the laws of physics and the laws of economics, the design morphed into something more like the skeletal remains of a dinosaur that one might see at the Museum of Natural History uptown. That is still very visually impressive. Yet this illusion was costly. It was originally budgeted at $2 billion, but came in at almost $4 billion. I admit, I'm jealous. I never get to go $2 billion over budget. By the way, Calatrava's Oculus overshadows its sibling a little further east on the subway line, and that would be the equally important and impressive, but ignored, Fulton Center Station by Nicholas Grimshaw and James Carpenter Design Associates. In that regard, the Oculus is Dick Smothers and the Fulton Center Station, Tom Smothers. Mother always did like you best. So much of the architecture that gets the media attention are the strange and novel aesthetics of the branded Starkitects. They are not seeking beauty in a philosophy outside of themselves, rather they are looking inward. It is a search for identity and a place in history. And it works. A few years from now, no one will remember the cost overruns or my comments. The space itself will be doing all the talking. Whether you think this is good or bad, the result is the same. Idiosyncratic branded buildings. A Santiago Calatrava building must look like a Santiago Calatrava building with its spiny white finial ribs creating the illusion of dynamic structure. And notice Calatrava is not doing videos based on any of my buildings. To me, the purpose of architecture was best summed up by the Roman architect Vitruvius in 10 Books on Architecture, circa 100 AD. He wrote that all architecture should be built with regard to firmitas, utilitas, and venustas, often translated as stability, commodity, and delight. 
Architecture is not just sculpture. It serves a practical, people-oriented purpose and should not destroy the patron financially. But it seems today star architects are interested only in venustas, with delight, beauty, the aesthetics. They leave stability and commodity to other people to figure out. And this failure of architects to keep it real has spawned another phase in the already complex modern construction process, the constructability phase, when experts evaluate an architect's design to see if it can be built, both physically and financially. To this humble practitioner of architecture, anyone who leaves constructability entirely to other people is not an architect. They are not a master builder. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.